Hey everyone, it's Chrissy from Everyday Savalgi, and today we are reviewing the Beirut Beirut Beirutus V7. Um, I picked this light up from Timu for like 20 Australian bucks minus 30% coupon, $13. So, like 8 US dollars. So, keep that in mind when I do the review. Wait, that means it's not going to be a good one. No, this light is good, but it does have a few quirks. For 8 US dollars, I'm not expecting the world, so. You should already know, like, I am pretty satisfied with this light, but it's not perfect. I mean, who is perfect? What is perfect? Who knows? Actually, let me take that back. I would know it is perfect if you would click like and subscribe. What a sellout. Uh, first and foremost, I'll just say it came in this pretty nice box, which I was not expecting for the price. And you do get a USB Type-C in here. I know not every, everyone around the world has a phone for Type-C. They're not still not, like, the number one port. Um, so yeah, you get like a little uh, keyring part here, and you do get instructions that does not say much at all, but um, there are instructions in here, which is pretty surprising, and they're actually, they're very well written too, like, check out that, it tells you exactly everything that you need to know, which is pretty good from a cheap light, but Beirut is not like a bad brand, they're not really like convoy quality, but you know, they did have the D25 headlamp, or the D10, um, so you know, a lot of you guys will know who they are. Okay, so where do we start? So I think uh, overall, if I'm going to tell you about the build quality, it's a very well built light, very well finished. In fact, so well finished that I have not been able to take it apart because they glued the bezel on and I did scratch it quite a few times around the bezel. Those scratches didn't come here. You can see that mark there. I was trying to get it off using uh, different instruments. I think I might have to drill out the optics. Um, so what caught my eye about this light was I seen the three LEDs here. And I thought, you know, maybe I can throw in some high CRI LEDs. But apparently they are actually 351Bs. But it doesn't say Samsung. So as the usual uh, bullshit way in China, they'll tell you it's an XHP50. But they won't tell you it's a Cree XHP50 because then that would be wrong. So um, I'm not saying that it's not Samsung LEDs, but I haven't confirmed it. But they aren't actually overly bad in tint. A quite decent tint. Um, and on the back here, we get a bunch of auxiliary um, lights. So you got a red, a white, and a blue, and a UV. And that's pretty much it, I guess I should say. Um, with the front LEDs, the output is rated by them for 1,100 lumens, and you get a 100 meters throw. I measured it at 1,128 lumens, or actually closer to 1,129 lumens. Um, but it does step down pretty quick, so it is only a small flashlight, so it's not going to hold that for a very long time. Like, I mean, the step down is like instant. Um, so yeah, um, I measured the um, throw at 3152 CD, whatever that equals in meters. I'm not sure. Whoop, I knocked the camera. So, spec wise, uh, it's got an internal 800 milliamp hour lithium polymer, so it's a like a soft cell. Uh, battery in there so don't go poking stuff in there um it takes a 5 volt input for the usb type c port which is covered here um it does take a bit of work to get this down but once it's down like it is pretty solidly down so it is rated to be ipx5 um so you can see that is pretty hard to get out there that shouldn't really come out but it is a bit of a pain to get down but you know if you want it to work that's how it's going to be um, charging time, they reckon three hours. Uh, when you charge, it does have a red indicator light and a green indicator light up here to let you know when it's charging and when it's full. Uh, the shell is uh, aluminium alloy, the usual 6016. Uh, it is uh, hard anodized. It does look like maybe it is pretty shiny. But then again, I have um, EDC this for a week now just to play with it and it hasn't scratched. Still looks pretty neat. Maybe a week and a half actually. Um, so I'm pretty happy with the anodizing. It is a very well-built flashlight. Um, charging mode type C. It only weighs 52 grams and it is uh, 64 mils by 37.5 mils by 21 mils. So it is pretty tiny if I show you compared to my hand. It is pretty small. Big smalls. Part of its quirks is fitting in this USB cover. It's so tight. You can't fit a need at an angle, it has to be flat up here, and then you got to push down on it, or else this part will stick out. See how that part's sticking out? It's got like a really weird way to fit it on, something like this. Maybe just wiggle it around a bit. 
and then nope, still not on. I'm gonna fight with this for the next hour. Alrighty, righty, righty, a. Eh? So checking out the um, B root V7 now. We'll just go over the UI. It is very quirky. Not everyone's gonna like it, and I can understand why you might not like it. But uh, I think it's gonna depend how you're gonna carry the light and what your expectations are for your money spent. Because um, around that eight dollar mark, you can get mm, probably not now an S2 Plus is more like closer to twenty dollars now, even on AliExpress. So yeah, you are getting like a full operational light compared to just getting a light without the battery, but it is a much smaller light. I'm just wasting time. I'm supposed to be talking about the bloody modes, aren't I? So um, it's got a instant on mode when you touch this here, this button, the on button. <laughs> touch me and then just touch me. So that gives you instant turbo. That's the only way to access turbo mode is from this mode. So that's your turbo mode there. So as you can see, there's no lockout, there's no clicky click. You accidentally click that in your pocket and you set your crotch on fire, which is probably better than setting crotch on fire other ways. Well, actually no, because if you did do something nefarious to set your crotch on fire, because you got an SDD, that would arguably be more fun, wouldn't it? So anyway, continuing on, um, we will double click and that gets you into the uh, main mode. So the main mode has four modes. Um, it's got a high mode, medium mode, low mode, and a economical mode. So we'll just cycle modes by clicking here. So that'll be blah, blah, blah. Um, that'll be the high mode. So that is apparently 410 lumens for 225 minutes. And it's going to step down, obviously, in that much time. We'll put it here so it doesn't play with the camera too much. Uh, medium mode, 270 minutes, 120 lumens. Should have changed it, right? Low mode, 12.5 hours, 65 minutes, and... 120 hours for 25 minutes and it does also have a memory mode so we'll leave it on low mode we'll push and hold to turn off and then we'll double click like so and you can see it's back on low mode which is pretty cool see that's the thing with this ui you could be accidentally going to turn it on and then you just click it like that and you just burnt out your retinas so that's not great but it would could you live with it? Well, that's personally, that's up to you. I will gladly say, because Beirut doesn't, no, Beirut doesn't, yeah, um, both of these modes have memory mode. So, yeah, that's cool. So, um, to turn on the auxiliary lights or the other LEDs, whatever you want to call them, I'm not sure what they're supposed to be called, the secondary LEDs, we'll just call it that. Um, you can push and hold, and that will always turn on the white mode, from what I can tell. That'll turn on the white LED, and that's like a lot softer and a lot more spread out than burning your retinas at 1100 lumens from the front LED. Um, so to get this one on, you double click, and it's got, got the red LED. They do give you the run times with this. Apparently the white is 10 hours, UV 12, this red is 11 and a half hours, red flash 18 hours, and blue flash is 15 hours. Red blue flash is 15 hours. There is actually no way to just turn on the blue by itself, which is quite peculiar. Oh yeah, if you got like um, epilepsy, you probably shouldn't be watching this right now. <laughs> I'll tell you that after. <laughs> um, so yeah, so back on white mode, apparently 10 hours. Um, this is kind of like a pretty cool mode. So we've got to push and hold to turn off. And then if we double click, it'll turn back on that mode. Uh, push and hold. No, I should have changed it. Double click and we'll click over. We'll start it on say red mode push and hold to turn off so if I push right now it'll always turn on white but if I double click it turns on red so that's pretty cool you can see that they did put like some effort into the um, driver it's just just not a piece of junk just too bad it doesn't have a lockout I have tried a few things to lock it out but I haven't find, found a lockout yet so we'll start the beam shots now with uh, checking out the UV light um, so it's on the UV right now um, yeah, I think there's a few spots to check out on these notes. This is an older note, so I'm not sure. But I don't really see anything coming up, so I don't think the UV is at, at the right um, spectrum to show off. These should be highlighted in, in like kind of like an orangey color around them, but they're not. I don't have another UV light here to show you guys, but yeah. Oh well, still works. Can you see any stains on the table? Nope. Well, at least it's clean. 
All right, guys. Now we're outside. We'll start the beam shots out here. We'll do the um, auxiliary lights first, the backlights, um, and um, we'll see how it goes. So this is just the white backlight. Um, this is on the push and hold mode. So you push and you hold and it turns on. You can see it puts out quite a lot of light, even if I move it over here to the trees, and you can see it's not too bad. It can even semi light up some of the backyard so it's pretty bright pretty cool uh, now this is the red light in the in the back lights the auxiliary lights um, it is actually also pretty bright not as bright as the white light but probably gonna look brighter on camera than to my eyes because the camera will pick up whatever infrared spectrum that there is that my eyes won't let's look at the tree yeah, that's pretty bright. I can't really see that on the tree, but in the camera can see it really well. So just for fun, we've got the little disco mode here. This is the uh, red and blue flashing. I'm not sure how legal this is, but it is pretty bright. If you look at the rest of the uh, rest of the awning, you can see it's doing a pretty good job of lighting everywhere up. Pretty cool if you need that sort of thing. All right, guys. Now we've got the uh, three LEDs on the, the front LEDs. Um, and we're gonna have to go from high to low mode because that's the way the UI is. But it does have memory mode, so that doesn't really matter, I guess, because you can always leave it on low mode, so it always turns on on low mode. But uh, yeah, so this is high mode, not turbo mode. So I believe they rate this as 450 lumens. I got like 380 lumens, but um. Yeah, it's pretty close. So we'll go to the next mode down. You can see not a big dip there, but definitely quite a dip. You can see the video is getting pretty grainy. Next mode down is quite a substantial dip. So you can see it doesn't quite light up the whole yard anymore. And next mode down is even lower. So this is mainly all the camera work right now. It's not that bright at all. But you can see it there it is a pretty dim mode pretty good out output like pretty low and for turbo mode we simply just push and hold and that is the turbo mode there 1128 lumens rated by me or 1100 by uh by roots pretty wide beam pattern and it is a pretty why? Oh, I know it's just a pretty white beam pattern. It is a pretty floody beam. But not overly floody. The optics are actually pretty cool. Um, you can see it is stepping down. It does step down pretty fast. But it is a very small light. Only a 800 milliamp hour cell. Alright, this is where I would usually compare it to other lights. But these beam shots have already been going for quite a while. And, um, you know, really, really stickly. I don't really have any lights that are in this kind of category that are similar similar build and shape because it's pretty unfair to compare it to a double a light because it is a lot bigger so there is that um then also you can compare it to a triple a and yeah so i think i'll just skip that apart anyway um so that's the boat root v7 you can get over it's a few little quirks i know like not having a lockout and the UI being a bit weird is a bit more than a quirk for some people but I think overall you know even if you look at the tint right now it's not that bad looking at the tint on the trees all the trees look like they're pretty nice colors so I think like overall for the price that they're asking it's a pretty good buy and I would recommend it um, if you want to EDC it maybe like just be careful not to switch it on um, but yeah just pretty good buy and as always um, like and subscribe and Thanks for watching.